Hey guys, welcome to this video. We will be reviewing the 2023 GCSC paper one. Uh, now we've got the Edexcel paper and we've had a thorough look at it. What's your early take on this? Well, from, from the reaction of my 11s, well, some of them were the ones I know that haven't revised, mm -hmm. um, not prepared themselves. They were like, you know, it was so hard and, and it's like they, they feel like, you know, it wasn't a good paper for them. Some of the kids came out, they said it was good, but some kids, they looked a bit upset. They yeah. said it was hard. And then I asked the next kid and they said it was hard. Um, and obviously I, at that time I haven't seen the paper yet. So I said, look, I don't know yeah, what you're calling describing hard, but until I've had a look at the paper, then I can't tell. And knowing those kids that were complaining, it's like I know from, you know, from experience that they are the people that, you know, really hard for them to sit down. See, and that's advise. the thing. This is the thing. You know, one thing I saw is that, I think some of the kids, and this is every year, guys, you guys always leave everything until the last minute. You know, you'd be surprised. Some of the kids were messaging me. People were starting to follow me on the social media yeah. from different schools and everything and just to ask me questions. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, all year we've been out there putting stuff out for you and other people have, your teachers have, and now suddenly you, you're concerned about this. I know you've got lots of exams on. But this is a typical habit. And if you're a student who hasn't done their GCSEs this year and you're going to do it next year and you come across this video, one advice I'd like to give you guys is please don't leave it too late. You, you know, GCSE isn't something that you're going to automatically learn overnight. You've got to ha you're going to have to spend months in advance preparing for this. But anyway, back to the paper itself. Yeah. I had a look at it, right? And I did actually share. And, and that's another thing. Last year, a lot of students, um, they said, look, you can't think like a teacher. So we've got to, both of us, put yeah. our student hat on here. Yeah, we've actually got to think like a student as much as we can. So tell us, how did you actually see this paper? Did you see it for what the kids were describing it as, some of the majority of them, that it was difficult, or was it something that is reasonable? It was reasonable. It was literally, in terms of the question, it wasn't, you know, where they have to think outside the box and the thing. Or, I felt that too. I it was, it was guys, literally, if you know the method, apply it. You get the answer. I have to agree with you there. And I'm going to, I'm sorry, but thinking as a student uh, as much as possible, I actually thought this was a decent paper. If, if they, you know, if, if, if you're a person that has done one past paper after the past paper, after past paper, you will love this paper. Absolutely. It's absolutely. literally everything that you've revised and covered in those past papers, it's there. Even if there's some repeat from the previous years, uh, like the last question, Kodani inequality, even though that's a hard topic. Yeah. It came, you know, it came up in, the, in one, of the, one of the previous past papers. Another thing before I go into the actual specific questions, obviously I won't go, f uh, you know, expose the questions or anything like that. I'm just going to sort of uh, talk briefly about the challenges that the questions may give, okay? Uh, one thing I just want to say about the uh, foundation thing, you know, like I've been saying to uh, a lot of people out there that if you're a foundation student, you will notice that the last, I think I counted, the last nine questions of the foundation uh, paper were the first nine questions of the higher. So, you know, the foundation students are really being uh, stretched because it's gone up to yeah. nine questions. And how many questions were there? 24 on the higher paper? So, foundation students, you know, if you had sat the higher paper, and this is a, a goal for you guys, if you're doing foundation, try to get yourself on the higher paper, you know, impress your teachers so that they see you for the higher tier if you're in year 10 and, or year nine whatever, okay, because you have a far better chance of answering those questions, those nine questions, and, you know, possibly, I, I didn't count the marks, but nine questions would, well, would take us, in, if you get them correct, for well, grade six at least, yeah. or maybe well, even grade six, five at least, five, five, yeah, yeah. definitely five, um, but, but maybe six, I said at least grade six. Uh, but anyway, let's go on to the specific questions, like, I highlighted four questions, 11, uh, 23, 22, 23, and 24. I just want to quickly talk about 11. Um, why some students may find it challenging. It's an indices question. It can get a little messy. But having said that, past papers, there was much more difficult question than indices compared to this one. But can you see, like, they've got negatives there, they've got things going on where you're multiplying but you the don't have You the don't powers. have fractions, you don't have mixed numbers. It's like, I've yeah, seen the past paper where it had mixed numbers as well as uh, fractional indices and negative fractional indices. Could it be that they didn't practice enough indices? Maybe some of the knowledge, like it's really it's testing. It's also a three marker. It's At least you, you can do the you know, numerator and denominator separately. Mm -hmm. You can get one or two marks mm -hmm. from there. Yeah. Um, so, kind of the whole yeah question, I mean, so. I'm sure some of the marks would be uh, taken just from you know, doing some of the parts. Of yeah. It. The next one was 22. 20, 22 for me. 
Well, this was actually a two marker question. Um, now, one, I mean, looking at this, I think a lot of students will find it difficult to imagine that plane and where the angle is that they're trying to look for. Because I haven't, but having said that, if if they have done questions like this before, they will know how. Oh, yeah, to for, do if you're a set one or a set two student, I mean, uh, if that, you, that's if you, lovely. If lovely. You, someone that if you actually done questions on on this on this topic, you would know what to do. Draw the triangle. Mm -hmm. In the past papers I've seen. They haven't made it easy. They you have to do. We have to work out those measurements needed to work out yeah, the final yeah. answer. Like, yeah, but here they give you all the measurements. And it's two marks as well. It's, yeah, so you so just, many. Okay, so that indicates how yeah. easy and uh, that question. They've given you the measurements. Is this your the but question twenty two though? I mean, that's right at the end. Exactly. So, so it, I guess it's the level of the topic itself. Um, but they've given the measurements. They don't expect you to trigonometry. You know, use any use any and uh, use Pythagoras or trick to work out the size Another you need. Side and then exactly. work at the base. So, Usually they work at the base. Yeah. Uh, triangle using 3D Pythagoras, yeah. for example. They give, they're right. giving you everything. You just have to. Can we turn to 23 next? The third yeah. question. Now, what do you think about this question? And before you give your bit on this, can you see how, you know, the, the new spec it uses several topics? So here, yeah. it's a third question. Clearly, you can see that. You know, you're probably going to be using rationalizer, which you are actually, uh, but you're using your knowledge of fractions. Your fractions has to be tip top condition to be able to access that. Isn't it? So to make the denominator the same and, you know, well, take away those two fractions? Here, I mean, if you treat those two separately, it's rationalize them and then, oh, yeah, yeah, and, and then, then, and then, and then you'll get like, it won't, won't have any inserts on the denominator. And then, you know, as you said, I'll add your fractions and together. Do as fractions. Yeah. But a lot of students. But it's, it's knowing, look, it's knowing does, the that, does that scare you? When you look at a question like that, does that scare you? Would that, wouldn't that have scared a lot of people and dented their confidence it's, in doing this? I mean, four marks at, well. at least it's near the end, though. It's not near the front. So at least in that sense, a by that time, it's like, you know, even if they do get scared, they will expect, you know, it's a high, you know, it's the last question like, you know, near the end. So expect it to be a little bit, bit more harder. All right. Next uh, is, is the last one, the 24. Question number 24, so the quadratic inequality. Now, that's a nice question. came up, <laughs> that similar question came up. Came up what uh, what would be the some of the challenges? Some students will face in answering a question like that. Well, for five months. The second one is a negative, negative one, so they may get a bit thrown up in how to factor. How many students that? will remember to draw that graph to find out where they're probably, in? probably, a, you know, much. And I haven't done this, but then they'd have to put the results on a number line. Yeah, and look at the find, commonality. Find, find, find the overlap. So they have work there. And the it, of but if you're a student who has been revising, who's done your quadratic inequalities, and you know, you would love this paper. I think this was a good paper overall. Can I just point out question yeah. 13, the, the direct proportion one. Okay. Again, it's another, another, not Very another example yeah. where in the past papers you had to do like two, two, two of them. Yeah, and then noticing that. And then you put one into the other to get an overall and, relationship. And, and you haven't got that. So if you've been doing the past papers, if you saw from what was there on the predictive paper. And it was like three marks. It was like, it wasn't even in a, a Squared or not square root, it was a normal direct proportion, that's it. I, I actually think, guys, um, my opinion and trying to be a student as well, uh, it was a nice paper. If you have been, you know, working well throughout the year, this you'll be happy about this. What would you say to those students if they did? I mean, we've had a difficult three years. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to bear in mind that these guys, uh, you know, in year nine, they would have had a lot of loss I just of learning. have a feeling that maybe paper two and three might be harder because well, I was actually saying to the students I was saying look some students came to me upset and I was saying look if you did find it hard and I had a look at the paper at that time I said that if this paper was hard for everyone then the grade boundaries will go down to accommodate that okay and papers two and three will be easier and they can look forward towards that as well because you know if let's say for whatever reason whether it's, this paper is considered to be hard or easy Whatever situation that you face in this exam, at the end of the day, you've got, you know, two more papers coming up on the calculator that you can make up for. My advice to you guys is start those early. Don't leave it until the last minute. Don't leave it the night before. Don't leave it two days before. You know, start now. I know you've got other exams that you have to juggle, but you've got a half term coming up. You know, use that half term wisely. You know, have some sort of routine that you can, you know, say, you know, I'm going to get my study time in for all my various subjects. I'm going to get my family time in. I'm going to get my you know, bit of socializing, bit of television, bit of video games, whatever it is. Um, but you have to prioritize those things because there's no point, guys, you know, coming out of the exam feeling upset, knowing that, you know, you didn't spend your time wisely enough. Mm. Yeah, so that's the message. Sometimes, we don't, not sometimes, all the time, we don't just look back at 
the things that went bad for us and not do anything about what we can control, which is what's coming up. Okay, you, you can control that. So that's my advice and message to you guys. Any last advice from you, sir? No, it's, it's as you said, it's <coughs> manage your time. Try to get through as many past papers. That's, you know, that's the key because you've got to, Train yourself to recognize certain topics, certain questions. If you've done that enough past papers, you <coughs> see the connection. At least you can start off the question, get some marks here and there. Um, Thank you. Um, finally, guys, I want to hear from you guys how you found the paper. So do leave your comments uh, below, um, any particular things. We don't want to really discuss the ins and outs of the questions mm -hmm. because, you know, these papers will be used next year for mock exams across various schools and all that. So... Uh, please don't do that, but do let us know how you found it. Anyway, guys, until the next one, bye for now.